Hi everyone, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another painting tutorial. This time we'll be tackling some German Grenadiers from Flames of War to coincide with the beginning of their relaunch of their late war range. In this tutorial I'll be using some paints from the Vallejo range to paint some of the German infantry found inside the new Hit the Beach Star set for Flames of War. Before we start painting we first of all need to apply a primer so that the later layers of paint adhere to the miniature surface. It doesn't matter too much which colour you go for, but I've opted to use a mixture of Vallejo's grey and black airbrush primers to help paint the various midtones of the miniature. You will also note that I am painting my infantry in a batch of five models, which I've grouped together onto a single base. To make holding the small miniatures easier, I've attached them to a lollipop stick with a small bit of super glue. The first area that I'll be painting is the uniform and webbing pouches, and for this, we'll be starting off with a base coat of German field grey. As with all the base coats that I'll be painting in this video, you'll want to mix this paint in with some water in roughly equal quantities to make the paint easier to work with. Don't worry about getting perfect coverage with your first layer as this is why we watered down our paint. After applying your first layer, allow the paint to dry before applying a second over the top. This layering technique will give a much smoother finish whilst avoiding the possibility of obscuring details by applying the paint too thickly. If your grenadier is wearing a Zeltban poncho or something must have smock, you'll want to give them a base coat of German camo beige. We will be painting these in both the same way, as at this scale you wouldn't notice much difference in the pattern. Continuing with the poncho and smock wearing miniatures, we'll be applying the camouflage pattern to them. We'll begin by using some German camo medium brown and we'll be applying some rough zigzag patterns over the base colour. You can also use this paint to base coat any bread bags or water bottles on your miniature as well. To paint the green areas of the camouflage pattern, I'll be using some Luftwaffe Camo Green to paint some patches between the zigzags. With the camouflage colour completed, we can next move on to the reddish-brown areas. These areas include the boots and also the wooden areas such as the tool handles and the rifle stock. The next base coat to apply is one of beige-brown, and this will give us our base colour for the flesh areas. To paint the helmet, gas mask canister and mess tin, we'll be starting off with a base coat of German camo dark green. Next we'll be painting the black areas of the miniature, which include any black leather pouches and webbing along with any metal areas. However, instead of using a black paint, we'll instead be using the very dark German grey instead. This is to allow the later wash to create some definition between the recessed and raised areas. With all of the base coats completed, we can now start to work on some washes. These are great for boosting the visibility of details as they will flow into the recessed areas and create the appearance of shadows. The first wash we'll be applying in this way is sepia wash, but straight out of the pot, it'll be a little too strong. So we first need to water it down a little. Mix water in with your wash until you have a consistency similar to what you see here. With your wash thinned, we next want to apply it across any brown, flesh and tan areas of the model. CPU wash is much more subtle and will not darken down these lighter coloured areas as much as black wash would. Once dried, you will find that these small details will stand out much more than they did before. Perfect for smaller scale miniatures such as these. The next wash to apply is black wash, thinned in the same manner as before. This time we'll be applying to the various shades of grey and green on the model, such as the field grey uniform, helmet and also equipment. Once the washes have dried, we now want to add some highlights to help improve the level of detail. To do this, lightly drag the tip of a thin brush along the raised edges. This will create a small line of lighter paint along these areas, helping to improve both depth and definition. We'll start off by highlighting the parts of the uniform that we painted with German field grey, along with the black webbing and pouches using some stone grey. Thinning down the paint with just a little water should make this task easier, as the flow of paint will be much smoother than if you had used it straight from the bottle. For the fabric ammo pouches, we'll be using a highlight of German camo beige. To maintain that reddish brown hue of the wooden and brown leather areas, apply a highlight of beige brown. Next, we want to very carefully pick out the facial features and fingers using some flat flesh. These areas can be very small, so the smaller brush you can use, the better. For the helmet, gas mask canister and mess tin, apply a thin line of German field grey along those edges. The final step is to add some of the metallic paint oily steel to the metal areas that we base coated with German grey earlier. Using this paint, we want to carefully apply it along only the edges. A thin brush will help with this. This edge highlighted technique will complete that dark metallic appearance. And here we have the completed German Grenadier squad which were attached to their base before I added some textured paint and static grass. 
For this tutorial, I took a lot of inspiration from the Colors of War book recently released to accompany Flames of War. It provides in-depth paint guides that cover an extensive range of World War II and Cold War era infantry and vehicles from multiple nations, eras and theatres. It's definitely worth checking out and is a great reference point for modern history wargamers. You can find a full list of all the paints used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. And so the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.